Hello, family. This is Sister Mika coming with the word from God today. Um, first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment in time, God. We thank you for you just being who you are in our lives. God, we ask right now that you continue to keep us safe, protect us from any tricks of the enemy, that you continue to order our steps, bright our tongue, let our thoughts be of you. Lord, we thank you for you strengthening our man and woman of God. Lord, we ask right now that if it's anyone that's listening to this message that is either sick or know someone that's sick, God, that you send your healing power to them. God, we thank you because we know that you are a healer. We know you are a chief physician, God, and you created us, God. And we know that everything is going to function and work the way that you created it to do from the beginning. God, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory, the praise and the honor, God, because you're worthy. We know what you have done. We know what you are going to do. We just know. We just trust you. We know what you're capable of, God. You're the same God from back then that you are today. You never change. And Lord, we thank you that the report would not return to you void, but it will do exactly what you sent it to do. And we just praise you right now. And God, we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. To Pastor Foster, First Lady, and my church family, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Um, I come to you today just for a few minutes just to encourage you in this season. I don't know about you, but sometimes when we're on this walk with Christ, we get tired. You know, you just want to lay down, quit, and just not do nothing. <laughs> you just want to just lay there and just cry or whatever you may do when you feel that way. But in this season, like for the last couple of weeks, I have been like extra emotional, you know, because everybody didn't know how I am about my parents, you know. They are my, you know, everybody know. <laughs> if you know me, you know how I feel about my parents. But in this season, God is strengthening me and he's making me strong in areas where I feel like I'm weak. He's strengthening me. And I thank God for that. Amen. He's so faithful. He's so awesome. And I'm just grateful because God, he's always there. He's always there with us no matter what. If you feel distant from God, somebody moved. And I can tell you that it wasn't God. Amen. So we just thank you right now. We just thank you, God, for what you're doing right now, God, because we know that you are moving on our behalf and we know that it's going to be a powerful, some powerful testimonies coming out of our ministry in Jesus name. Amen. So I have a couple of scriptures that I wanted to, you know, drop in your spirit, you know, just to encourage you. But the message for today is you fight on. First Baptist, you fight on, we fight on, amen? Us as a, a, a ministry, as a family, we are to fight on. You know, the enemy wants us to throw in the towel. The enemy wants us to quit on this journey. The enemy wants us to fail, but God wants us to push on, amen? He wants us to keep fighting. So First Baptist, my word for today is you fight on, amen? All right, so we're gonna jump into our scriptures. And the first one is Colossians 4, 2 through 6. And it says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them there are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So when I was reading this scripture, is I always say that it's always praying time. It's not a time where you shouldn't pray. We should always be praying at all times. You know, First Thessalonians five seventeen tell us to pray without cease, and that means you're always in prayer. You never stop. So this verse is letting us know, hey, you need to continue in prayer and watch in the same with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving meaning that you're grateful, you're happy. You know, things may look like it's crazy all around you, but Thanksgiving, God give you a spirit of Thanksgiving, a spirit that make you want to praise and worship him, amen, because he's worthy of our praise, amen, hallelujah. So our next scripture is coming from Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and it says, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving there go that word again thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus make your request known first baptist you have a tongue use it 
Make your request known. Tell God what you need. He already know before you even ask him because he made us. He know what his children need. Amen. So make your request known. First Baptist, you fight on. Amen. John 16 and 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. God is letting us know he's already overcome the world. Victory is in Jesus, amen? We have the victory. First Baptist, you fight on. First Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's, that's an encouraging verse for me because it lets me know that God cares about me. He don't want me to be stressed. He don't want me to be worried about anything that's going around he, because he cares for me. Amen. He cares for you just like he cares for me. Amen. You fight on First Baptist. First Corinthians chapter 10 and 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is coming to mankind. And God is faithful. How many know him to be faithful? Amen. The word tells us that God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. God is a God that will give us strength. If we're being tempted, he will come and strengthen us and give us what we need. Jesus was tempted. So what make you think that you're going to be on this walk and not be tempted? My God, God will give you strength. Amen. So then it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am made strong." God will give us strength, y'all, in this season, even when we just want to just cry. And there's nothing wrong with crying because, you know, sometimes you have to let that out. I'm learning that myself. Sometimes you have to let stuff out and not hold it in because that'll make you even sicker. Amen. But it says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. You're not strong by yourself. You're only strong with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Then it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 through 13. I know what is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That right there is a company to let me know that I can't do anything on my own. I have to do it with God because God says that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Not some things, not 10% of things, not 70% of things, but all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Fight on, First Baptist. Joshua 1 and 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's letting me know that, hey, wherever I may go, God is with me. Especially if I'm like seeking him and saying, God, hey, should I go to this place? God, should I go there? And if God tell you not to go, don't you go. But God is with you wherever you go, especially if you're doing it in his will. Amen. First Baptist, you fight on. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know. Hallelujah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God wants us to have a future and expect it in. Because he already know what he's thinking towards you and it's not of evil, but it's of peace. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The next verse says, Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. That's letting me know I'm not alone. I'm never alone because he's with me, amen? And he's with you too. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I don't know about you, but who need God's help? I do. I need him every day, every minute, every second, every hour. I need his help, amen? 
because he's the one. If I'm frustrated at work and I'm like, Lord, I need you. I can call on him and he can help Sister Valerie. He can help Pastor, First Lady, Auntie Gail, Uncle Son. He can help us all at the same time. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it tells us that he is with us. Amen. So then it says in Philippians 4 and 19, and my God will meet all your needs, not some of your needs, not 10% of your needs, but all your needs, according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. If there is a need, I know God as a need meter. He will make the, he will meet the need. Amen. Make your request known first Baptist. You fight on because God knows what we need in this season. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 119 and 114 through 115 says, you are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Everyone that's trying to be around you in this season, they don't need to be around you. Ask God to reveal to you who you need to cut off because you know, when you get elevated, everybody can't go to your new level. Some people are going to be left behind because they can't go where you're going. Trust God and let him order your steps. Amen. So he is your refuge and he is your shield. I mean, he's your protector. He will keep you safe. Amen. You keep your hope in his word. That's what you need to do. Read God's word. Fast, pray, meditate, learn you some scriptures to put in your spiritual bank account. So when you can't get to your Bible that you hold in your hand, you can pull out of your spirit what you put in. Amen. He can't pull nothing out if you ain't put nothing in. My God. Then it says in Psalms 121, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. I don't know about you, but that just made my day to let me know that God is my strength, that God is my helper. He's my protector. He don't want anything bad to happen to me or to you. He is our keeper. Amen. So I just want to encourage you all. You fight on. You remember what God says in his word. You, you be strong. The enemy wants you to give up, but you keep pushing. You keep pushing and you tell that enemy to go back to the pits of hell and never return because you know that you are a child of the most high God, the mighty king, the living one. Amen. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. Our last scripture for tonight or today is <laughs> coming from Proverbs chapter three, five and six. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some of your heart, all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, not some of your ways, in all of your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. My God, if you don't trust anything in this world or anybody in this world, you make sure you put your trust in God. People will lie to you. They will talk about you. They'll stab you in the back. They'll just talk, just run your name in mud, tell lies about you, but trust in God because God is the same today, tomorrow, forevermore. He'll never change. And God will do exactly what his word says. His word will come to pass. Amen. Amen. So in this season, God is reminding me that he's a healer. You know, he's a healer. He's working mightily in our family. He's working mightily in our church family. But you all need to trust, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. God is a healer. He is a healer. He's a chief physician. And I know that he's at the hospital working, doing what he's he's supposed to do. He's just being there. And I know that he's massaging the elder. The angels are walking around his bed according to my faith and my spiritual imagination. They are ministering to him. Amen. And it's going to be a powerful testimony. We're going to shout first Baptist. Shout before it happened. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. And we just thank you, Lord. Lord, 
I thank you so much for just being who you are. I thank you that we can call on you whatever time because you don't have like certain business hours where we can't call on you at a, at a, after a certain hour. But I love the fact that you can be with me and be with, a, with one of my sisters and brothers all at the same time. And that when I call on you, you hear me and I don't have to hear you say, I can't deal with you right now. God, I just thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for being a mountain mover. You're moving the mountains in our lives. I thank you that you're breathing a breath of life in all of our lives, God, that our lungs, our organs, vessels, muscles, tissues are functioning the way that you created it to do. God, I thank you right now, God, because I trust you. I know what you can and what you will do, Lord. I know that this battle is not bigger than you, but you're bigger than this battle. And I just thank you, God, that you're big. I thank you that you're just awesome and that you're moving on our behalf, that you're moving on our behalf. And I thank you right now that your children are not going to be selfish with their testimony. They're going to tell what you did in due season. God, we just thank you right now, Father. We thank you for you just being who you are in our lives, God. We ask that you continue to order our steps, that you brighter our tongue with our thoughts be of you. God, we just praise your name. We give you the highest praise of hallelujah. We thank you right now, God. We just praise your name. We can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough, God. We thank you for being the way maker, the peace giver, the one that's always there with us. God, we thank you. You're the one that give us sweet sleep at night when we lay down. We thank you in advance for that. We just praise you, God. Lord, we ask that you touch every ministry, God, that's functioning in your name, God, that you just heal if it's any brokenhearted or sickness or suicide spirit or anything, God. We ask that you just touch right now, that you just touch right now. You put the right person in that person's path to give them a word from you. God, we thank you right now. We just praise your name, God, and we give you all the glory, the praise and the honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. To my family and friends, I love you in the name of Jesus. And like Pastor always say, there's nothing that you can do about it. Amen. And I always remember that if you don't praise them, we've been trained, we'll praise them by ourselves. Amen. You all be encouraged and you fight on. Don't throw in the towel. You push, you fight on. No matter what you may see, no matter what's going on, you fight on. Get in the word fast, meditate, pray, hallelujah, listen to you some worship music and just think about the goodness of God and what all he's done and what he's doing right now and what he's going to do. Praise him in advance. You don't have to wait until it happens. Praise him in advance. Deposit you a praise. Deposit you a right now praise God because you know that God is going to do it on your behalf. Amen. So again, I just want to encourage you all to fight on. You fight on. Do not give up. Rebuke the enemy when he tries to talk to you. Rebuke him. I thank you all for this moment. I just love you all. And I just give God the praise and the glory for all of you. In Jesus' name, amen.